I've been in finance, invested in tech, but never really got my head around Web3. It's a controversial industry filled with scandals where everyone seems to have a different opinion. I've always wondered, is there something more behind the headlines? Web 1 and 2 have already changed how we live, work and play. What happens when the next evolution is powered by a host of new values and technologies? I've discovered that countries in Asia are building for a Web3 future, each in their unique way. So I'm on a journey to learn from the builders in real life. Metaverse, a new world is calling. Thailand moves into the Metaverse era. Halfverse world. Education verse. Make your dream asset. Wow, there are so many Metaverses. Web 5.0 Metaverse. I thought we were at Web 3.0. <laughs> think so far we have seen about 10 Metaverses in Thailand alone. This is completely new to me. I always thought that tourism is the main industry and I never really thought of them as big in tech. I want to go behind the scene to know if this is just hype or speculation, understand why there are so many metaverses in Thailand. One of the things that surprises me is how Thailand is so big in the metaverse. I read that there are about 10 Metaverse projects. I think there are more. <laughs> Sorry, so you, you think that there are more than 10 projects? I think so, yeah. When Mark Zuckerberg comes out last year and said, OK, I want to change the name of Facebook into Meta and we are not a social media company anymore. We are now a Metaverse company. So that's when the word Metaverse started to hit. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. In Thailand, a lot of people trying to go in because it resonated with the Thailand 4.0 or digital economy that we're implementing. We've been a middle-income country for so long and we don't want to be that anymore. So to move out of that, we have to create high value things. And okay. that is Thailand 4.0? It's about moving our country forward using innovation by being the innovator and not just the user of the technology. And is Metaverse part of the Thailand 4.0? It wasn't discussed when the concept of Thailand 4.0 started, but right now people talk about them together sometimes. Maybe if we take a step back, what do you think is the Metaverse? I, I think there's no like formal definition about it. It can be viewed by different people differently. Many tech companies think about this as the world that has immersive experience in which you have to have like the VR. But there's another group of people thinking about this as a blockchain-based metaverse, like Sandbox or Decentraland. For those group of people, immersive experience is not really that important, but what's important is building their own economy based on blockchain and has its own cryptocurrency, and then let us some economy within it. What I think is that it's just a virtual world in which people go in and interact, socialize, maybe create something productive within it. So is it just another evolution of a social media platform? For me, Metaverse is just fancy platform, you know, fancy with you know, whatever like we are, but it's a platform. You want people to come in, spend a lot of time, so you can sell them things. There are other countries that are in the metaverse race, right? So what do you think of Thailand's effort? Thailand is quite all in, right? For private sectors, it seems like many companies are trying to build their own metaverse, but sometimes it's not really like the metaverse in the way that people expected it. Sometimes it's just a website, but people just call it metaverse. I think just like Gartner hype cycle, at the beginning, people don't know much about it. And since Meta, a lot of companies wanted to PR about it. So a lot of expectation 
But I think after a few years, then people will start realizing what it is, what it can do, and what it cannot do. Then you can have realistic expectation about it and make real use of it. If Thailand want to win, what we need to do is not whether it's VR, it's how to make people come back. It's business model. It was very refreshing to meet someone who actually said, wait a minute, let's think this through. There's no need for all of us to rush into it. At the end of the day, the metaverse is an evolution of the digital world that we live and interact in. Regardless of whatever technology that we are using, for a metaverse to be successful, it's still back to basics. What are the use cases? Who is your community? I realised that there are actually a lot of firms trying to help people to get onto the Web3 and metaverse. It's quite complicated for each business to enter into the metaverse. You have questions about oh, which platform you want to use, you know, how you design your metaverse, how do you generate revenue, how do you gain community. Diosis was built as a concept to help businesses expand quickly into the digital world by using Metaverse as a platform. Is there a reason why you're building the Metaverse? Did you see any trends? Thailand is one, one of the largest game market and social media market in ASEAN. They spend at least 10 hours a day on screen using social media, watching YouTube and playing game. So I think Metaverse is an opportunity to combine social media and gaming together. We estimate that already a few millions of Thai people are in the metaverse, like Roblox or Fortnite already. These mostly are younger generations like Gen Z. We believe that Gen Z is a trendsetter and then they're gonna bring in more and more older generations into the metaverse together with them. Just like they did in social media era, we expect that one third of Thai people you move into the metaverse in the next five years. I think the success of any social media platform is on its users, right? Yeah. What are some of your strategies to ensure that you have users in your metaverse? The core focus of DLCs is not to be uh, technology developers because it's going to take a lot of time and resources. We believe that technology will keep changing, so we focus on building communities. <laughs> And by having solid communities, we can be on any technology platform that's going to succeed in the future. We started as an informal conversation with our founding partners. Each of them bring their partners. Within six or seven months, we have more than 50 partners. They're business from different industries, music companies, event organizers, sport, education, we have more than 20 influencers with different specialties. Combined, they have 30 million followers in social media. Oh, wow. And so we work closely with our influencers. Each will have their own house whereby fan base can come and get to know her better. These are all the houses that we are going to build. They all look so different. We want to make sure that we bring out the unique personality into the Metaverse house. The first step is we will sketch out the design and then the initial game flow. Hello. Then we will work with the in-house development team so that they can develop the actual Metaverse building.
This is a hangout space for our community. We have bars, DJ booths, art gallery. Once if I'm in this world, I can also hang out with you virtually. Yes, yes. Usually people enjoy socializing with the other NPCs yeah. or they play games. What are some of the revenue generating models of your metaverse? Right now is to sell uh, assets for certain celebrities like Gekai. She has her own product, so we can integrate her physical product into the game. For example, in Gekai House, we have a smoothie making game. The player would have to find ingredients, go to the cafe at the counter to do the smoothie, then receive some kind of NFT. And I can use that NFT to buy the physical product or redeem meet and greet tickets to meet up with gay guy. Also, we're gonna create Metaverse events and launch NFT assets that users can buy. What are some of the challenges when designing the Metaverse? First is on the design part. Yes, you can design on your computer, but the hard part is the implementation on the technical part because each metaverse has different building tools, different features. So we have to design accordingly to that particular metaverse requirements. And we're at the early stage of metaverse. So while we are working with our partners, we try to educate them at the same time so they understand what they're putting themselves into and how are they going to benefit from being in Metaverse. You mentioned that you have 30 corporate partners. Are they all looking to enter the Metaverse as part of their digital transformation? Some of our founding partners, they are from traditional, more physical-based um, businesses. For example, Trukit Bandit University, their business is based on physical classroom, right? And younger generation, they are using more like iPad, you know, low blocks and online learning YouTube to learn. Varix is one of the biggest sportwear brand in Thailand. So their business model, again, rely mostly on physical sport. But younger generation, they move into e-sport. I think um, we feel that Thailand has missed the boat almost completely. In, in, in the Web2 era. We are basically only users rather than developers or producers of, of Web2. We don't want to miss that opportunities anymore. That's why Metaverse is the critical tool for them to move into Web3 quickly. Even though Thailand has one of the highest social media users, we don't have our own Thai social media, mm. no Thai startups. I think one of the key skills that we need is entrepreneurship skill. We really want to prepare the students for what's to come. So we are launching our Metaverse campus, trains people the skills needed to enter the Web3 space. Yeah from the currencies, NFTs, digital identities into the metaverse itself. So when the Web3 hits, students can be accustomed to technology and building their own startups. I need to be a student there. <laughs> <laughs> In Web2, when we experience the Facebook, the problem that we face is the technical knowledge. Yeah. And we jump into the, the wave too late. We fail a lot in the, the tech thing. When we think about Web3, we start early with all the business partners and we move fast. I think we are the, the biggest move and fastest move in, in Thailand and maybe in, in Asia. As a sportswear brand, do you think that online purchases in the metaverse will be the next frontier for your business? For a brand, Warwick brand, we jump into the, the future lifestyle. Not only buy and sell things, it's a competition thing, it's an active lifestyle. They can not only socialize, share their content, everybody in the world can compete in the same time, in the same stadium. Not only in the metaverse, compete with the one who are in the actual stadium offline in Bangkok. So sport can unite the world into the same language. We aim to be multiverse companies, so Sandbox is our first step into the metaverse. And as long as we have community, then we can keep changing 
according to what technology changes. How many metaverses do you think we'll see? We can have like hundreds of metaverse. If you look at social media right now, you have Facebook, IG, Twitter, TikTok, TikTok, right? The world cannot take on like ten. I mean, hundreds of our social media platform, right? Similarly, in metaverse, we need big communities to survive. So I think there will be only three to five global um, big uh, metaverse communities. What is Metaverse? You will get as many responses as many people you talk to. Accenture believes that Metaverse is not a specific instance of a technology that comes to life. It is a continuum of technologies that are going to coalesce over the next decade. 3D, augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality. These are the building block of a Metaverse. Artificial intelligence, automation and last but not the least, blockchain. It is a continuum that spawns various enhanced realities, enhanced worlds, and solutions or business models. So nobody is saying that Metaverse is already fully formed, but it is something that is forming right in front of us. What is the impact we are talking about here? How do you see the Metaverse actually transforming industries? We believe that Metaverse is probably more profound change than digital itself. It is equivalent to what was there in the Web 1, which is the Google era, or the Web 2, the Facebook era. Now we are in the Web 3 and the Metaverse era. Most of the companies who will become the biggest are being now defined at this moment. So you think that the market leaders, the industrial leaders of the next decade are actually building the Metaverses today? Everyone has a unique opportunity to actually spearhead it for a change, not be laggards of followers. However, businesses today are rapidly going towards a future which they have not been designed for. Because most digital transformation have been designed for consumers moving towards internet rather than world which is almost virtual. At that point, you need to change the way you operate. Gone are the days where we can actually create something and try to influence people to come in and just adapt to their experience. The Metaverse reaches out to people who sync with their values rather than sync with the geography. What elements are critical in these Metaverses? One important element is that it is not about just the technology, it's about what you are telling with the right technology. What is the story that you're telling with your Metaverse? In the Metaverse Initiative, we try to come up with the culture that everybody in the world can share and can relate. So we use Thai to talk to the global citizen. Metaverse initiatives that you have. It is very refreshing. Can you share with us why you want to enter the Metaverse? We consider ourselves a platform, physical platform, <laughs> right? Because we are combining retailers, consumers and partners together, but now adopting that kind of thinking into digital. Metaverse will help us expand our digital ecosystem to more of a Web3, and bringing experience closer to global citizens. How do you develop a metaverse strategy? How does the metaverse evolve? It's literally human beings, obviously, who start coding away and, and seeing what works. From that perspective, in order for us to create meaningful capabilities and features around, we have to try it out. Iterate new ideas, putting it at the market, evaluating results and readjusting our execution every day. Do you have any examples of what has been working and what didn't work? A couple of years back, it was popular to have virtual designs and malls to walk through on web browsers, and they had mixed success. 
And I don't know that having a virtual building with avatars of all of us and then selling good is the right experience for the next generation of tech platforms. I think this copying and pasting is not the right way. It's understanding what's going on, looking at best practices, and then finding our own way of setting that up. I think that we need to understand what our strengths is. It's really about accepting what we're strong in terms of heritage, but being open to combine new things and creating something that is surprising. When we start developing Icon Sayam, we are studying the whole river and the culture itself, trying to understand what really is Thai. And you go visit temples. Oh, this part is coming from arts from Japan or China. Some is coming from Khmer, from India. But when you're putting all that together, it's Thai. So we bring the creativity that's innate in Thai people to create something different in our metaverse. We started off with Songkran Splash. During the pandemic, tourists cannot come into Thailand and enjoy that splashing New Year party that Thailand always have to offer. We work with Sapito, the leading Korean platform, so that consumers can go in and create their own avatar and enjoy the Songkran party on Metaverse. create the whole town, our own avatar, with a Thai traditional uniform. In Thailand, it's very controversial. You know, when you, you play something with a traditional thing, you make sure that it comes out nicely. When we do this, we didn't talk about the monetization any at all. We talk about the experience. But when we see, it, oh my god, people bought 800,000 items in two days. And like, Wow, it's, it's crazy. We see the potential to monetization. And how do you measure the success for this project? For us, as Jam Piwat, we see it as a long game. Everything is learning by doing too. So the main point of this is to experiment and learn what works? Yeah, when we do this, we learn our audience is tech savvy. They love to hang out, express themselves. So we at the fashionista center of style at the next metaverse. We collaboration with Bangkok International Fashion Week. So we create the how, our own avatar. We ask the digital creator to come up with the design. And we bring the design into the real fashion show. You can buy it at the Wan Siam shop in Sepeto and physical store. It has to empower the audience that they can do anything to express themselves in every way. Start with the digital creator, yes, but you can go work you know, in the same space as the real fashion designer. But surely these are very different from your typical customers, right? With all these initiatives, are you reaching out to new demographics? Well, Sayam Center has been here for 50 years without keeping a new generation of customer to engage with our property, um, but we can't bring in, you know, sustainable business. One of the key strategies is to engage Gen Zs. Right? Yep. How do you know what they want? We do sometimes go out to focus group, walking the store, seeing how Gen Z behave, but it's really working with them to bring them into the think tank team to generate ideas and come up with new programs. Working with them is not like a boss, but it's like a friend. You need to understand them. Hey, take me back to real hip -hop. I'm hungry now. <laughs> okay, I'm hungry too. What, what do you want to eat today? To My method is to try to get into the skin without them know. Let them talk something that they're not going to talk to the parents. You have to keep your eyes and ear open and learn their way of speaking through their lens. What do you both do in Siam Piwa? I'm in the business development. I work with the Think Tank team is driving the initiative for the Metaverse and NFT projects. What are you guys most excited about for Metaverse? 
I think there's the opportunities endless is that you can create your own world and you can be a completely different person. When I created my own first avatar in, in the metaverse world, I put like a blonde hair with, yeah. the, oh, wow. with a wing <laughs> and oh, really? tiara. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, Interesting. You, know, you have this a whole different persona and interact with different types of people that you usually don't interact with. So, you, you, you know, there are a lot of metaverses. Have you experienced one that is a bit lame, a bit cringe? I think some of the metaverse, they have very specific uh, audience, right? So, for example, Roblox is very focused on the younger audience. Mm. And I used to like it, but when I grown up, I think that's a bit, uh, you know... Not yet. Then. Yeah, cringe for me because it's not for me anymore. I think metaverse should be a place that is for everyone, right? Inclusive. What are some of the biggest things that you have learned about the Gen Z? The way they're thinking is different from us. They grow up 24-7 with social media, so they can smell the fakeness. If you're not genuine enough for them, you know, and you not give them something that meaningful and relevant, they're going to shut you off, you know. They're just really picky on things and, you know, no toleration at all. The more I understand them, we can shape to do the better strategy to talk to them. Sooner or later, they're going to be the most powerful. If we're not starting to talk to them at this, you know, they're not going to talk to us anymore. So you are building a long-term relationship through the Metaverse Initiative? Yes, exactly. What advice will you give to organisations that are actually thinking about the Metaverse strategy? I feel that um, innovation goes best when you can drive some revenue with it and when you can try and learn and, and evolve fast. There may be an inf inflection point where these platforms change fundamentally, also maybe the tech is different, and then maybe it changes. As a leader, my job is to make sure that it doesn't matter what I think today, but that we are able to work with all of them and we can evolve. If you go back 18 months, two years ago, it was more about digital transformation. That show is really over. Who hasn't done it, basically, I think they, they're left out in the rain. And I think now there's an urgency to innovate, an urgency to move forward. Not doing it means is that you're going to see literally revenue go down, profits go down. I feel that only the right rapid innovation is going to drive share the value of the future. I'm starting to understand why the metaverse is so important to corporations, especially the ones in consumer businesses. They are making a bet into the future by engaging the young consumers early through the metaverse. For these businesses, it also allows them to reach a global audience at a fraction of the cost, which is also why they don't have a clear financial ROI. The Thai companies that we have visited think long term, they have a lot of resources, they are patient yet flexible. So I think with continuous experimentation, these Thai companies will go very far in the metaverse. So this building here, we want to have new possibilities for Thai architecture. So we combine with computational design and digital fabrication. I will show you the brain power of the site. This is a digital twin for construction. It's kind of like a parallel world that runs alongside what we build. Digital twins combine all the related files together, structural engineering and also the mechanical engineering, like AC and sanitary pipes. With cloud technology, every party can work together in real time. Let's say we move the wall by like 
one centimeter or two centimeter, the engineers can see the change. I will show you the AR stuff. We use it to check the mass and also make the contractor understand it more. Here you see the pipe running down here. And the cyan color here is the AC part of the project. Oh, so that's the aircon. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Everything will be embedded in the floor. As the name augmented reality, it's augment the capability of the worker on the site because they understand the work more, so they can build more complex work. But the price for HoloLens for each worker is so expensive that it's not be feasible for them. I think there are a lot of architects that are very excited about the metaverse. In fact, I think a lot of them are trying to build in the metaverse. Have you done it? For metaverse and digital twins, it's not just about the virtual world that you come in there and enjoy talking to other people, but for our profession, the part that we're really interested in is at the sandbox of simulation. We build everything digitally once. We cross-check everything first, so you know what to expect what the problem is going to be, which part need to fabricate first and when, in order to meet the timeline. In one of our Net Zero projects, we use the metaverse to simulate the environment in order to make our building exposed to less heat. So you use less energy to cool your building. There are some countries that actually build metaverses. Mm -hmm. How long do you think before metaverse becomes a reality? For mass user, I think the difficulty of metaverse right now is because when you want to be in virtual world, right, you need something that look ultra realistic. But what we have right now is kind of like low resolution image. The computer power is not good enough to render a realistic image in real time for everybody. And another issue of it is the environmental concerns, right? Because with high definition render, you come with high electricity in order to have that computing power to render it. And how far away do you think we are from solving these issues? Wow, there's a lot of things to solve, right? First, you need to solve <laughs> the electricity problems, computing power to reach the mass. Maybe if they can have like low-cost cloud computing for everyone, maybe we can reach that state like sooner. We all talk about how this is a borderless virtual world where people interact, but the truth is the metaverse is still being defined. At this stage, we are all still figuring it out. What we are trying to build, what kind of technology we are going to deploy, and how we are going to interact with each other for the metaverse to gain mass adoption. We need a lot of technologies to bridge us from here to there. We believe that in the future, there will not be only one metaverse. So we are building an ecosystem where we can establish what we call interconnected metaverse. I think everyone who's building the metaverse has their own views. What, in your view, is the metaverse? Well, I think metaverse is another evolution of how we consume media. If you look back 30 or 50 years ago, we started from newspaper, and then after a few technological advancements, we have radios, people consume media more, and now we consume everything in one single device. The question is, what would be the next iteration of media consumption? A lot of evidence tells us that we are shifting from 2D to 3D environment. We believe that in the future there will not be only one metaverse, but somehow those metaverses have to communicate to each other. So we would like to build an ecosystem to combine each metaverse into a singular experience that people can interact with. But how many metaverses should there be? How many metaverses <laughs> there will be, right? I cannot answer that. <laughs> I think metaverse would be the next iteration of how people go inside the internet. You go to different websites for a certain purpose. I think there will be a lot. So is Translucia the picks and shovel of the metaverse 
Or are you building your own metaverse? Imagine Shopify. Yeah. Anybody who wants to open the shop yeah. can use the Shopify as a platform, mm -hmm. right? So we built that core engine that allows people to build their own experience. And at the same time, we also built different experience. One of the use cases that we are building is translucent to show what kind of value that we can provide with this engine. But there are so many e-commerce, retail, education, healthcare. Our Metaverse engine consists of many technologies. We build everything from ground up, from the infrastructure, the experience, and different touch points for users. The main differentiation of Translucia is we thinking about interconnectivity from day one. We think about safe and positive. How can we build trustful digital society? Because we want to avoid all the problems that we see from social media now. And how can we provide an equal opportunity for people in creator economy from Web3? So we are building our own layer two blockchain to facilitate all the transaction and also provide decentralization. We want to create a safe and positive environment. So the economy design part is one of the crucial things. We are working closely with the economists to design the interaction for users and incentivize them to do positive action. Are there any ethical or moral concerns for you in the metaverse? Of course, for long-term projects like this, we cannot avoid considering ethical and moral from day one because we are dealing with a lot of people and information. We use technology like AI as a content moderation and working closely with social scientists and legal experts. I read that you raised 100 million. Once your 100 million runs mm -hmm. out, how are you going to finance this? We don't just spend 100 million without nothing, right? <laughs> We're still always seeking for opportunities to, to monetize. But there are so many sub-elements that we can quickly spin off as a new business. How should we provide the avatar creation for business? Mm. How should we use NFTs to transform business in a meaningful way. The blockchain infrastructure has already deployed into a lot of well-known NFT projects. For example, Australian Open. There's a lot of projects coming up on the pipeline and we aim to sustain the business in long term. So are you actually going against the big players like Meta, Sandbox? Are they your competitors? Well, I, I think it's too early to say that each companies are competitors or not because a, a lot of things still in the emerging stage. Not even a single company uh, are achieving what they are expecting for Metaverse. It's a learning curve for everybody and, and for the users as well. I know a lot of people, you know, heard about Metaverse and still not having a solid idea. Once we got to the point where, where everybody, you know, understand the real value and the proper and meaningful business use case, and then I believe we started to see how differentiate between each platform. What I find very fascinating is that you have partners who are big names. And Translucia is kind of an experiment, it's kind of building a new future where we don't know where we are really heading to. Mm -hmm. How are they comfortable with that? I think it comes from the vision. Translucia is the visionary and ambitious project. We didn't put profit in the first place. Instead, we focus on the purpose. Why are we building this? And and the purpose of the users, purpose of the business. And once we establish that very strong purpose, I think the business model and profitability will come. And it, it's not just for us making profit. It has to be the place where we allow everyone to benefit from. 
Metaverse is the platform that provides global opportunity for people. Thailand or other countries can be a main player in this evolution. I notice that with each wave of Web3 technology, we attract new group of users. Cryptocurrencies attracted the techies, blockchain attracted the corporates, DeFi attracted the finance people, GameFi attracted the gamers, and NFT attracted all the creatives. If the metaverse develops a strong enough use case, it could onboard a new wave of users. However, I think that the key ingredient is the mobile phone. Just look at the number of users in the metaverse that have mobile apps and in those that don't. The number differs significantly. Until the metaverse experience can be delivered in a low-cost and convenient manner to the users, I think the metaverse will struggle to gain mass adoption. This is the heart of the canal in Bangkok. Back in the days, they used to have a market, they have a fish, you can swim, it's beautiful. But then, then industrial age affect everything. About seven or eight years, you know, when it first came, it was all full of trash, full of illegal house. So it needs to be removed. But then if you don't want people to protest against it, what can be an alternative option for them? In Thailand, we have a group called Urban Action. We are a bridge to people where we get on the ground, listen to what they like to see in the future of their community, do a master planning with them. And then we engage with the government, basically be the gate opener and let everyone come and talk. This place was the first successful case in Thailand. I myself, as a volunteer in Urban Action, seeing how people engage, I bring that to build the world and limit nation. If we want to design a whole land, we come to talk to the people and experience the place through the workshop. You get a lot of designs from the local community and create the voxel art all around it. Why do all this, right? Why not build a fantasy world then? I think the more we listen to the voice of people, no matter you are from the Web 3, you know, Web 4, Web 2, it's thinking from the real inside. No. เอ่อตรงกันตัวทองตรงกันตัวทองทีนี้วันนี้เนี่ยพี่ๆก็จะเอาสัตว์ที่หนูเห็นน่ะทุกๆวันเนี่ยมาประกอบกันเป็นหน
fun about the metaverse is there is a place for everyone, even for the small players or the underdogs. It presents an interesting opportunity to build an inclusive world where you feel that you're a part of something instead of just entering a world that is being built for you. So, what is the metaverse? Frankly, after speaking to so many people, I still don't have a definitive answer. Sirikit believes that it's a social media and gaming platform, while Tao thinks that there will be many metaverses with different purposes. Some believe in its use for industry, some believe in its ideals, while some don't really care and they will just find the next best strategy to work with whatever comes. Everybody has their own views and they are building a future based on their views. I think this is very representative of the global metaverse scene where it is slightly confusing because it's still a blank page and everybody's trying to write their own stories in it. But one thing's for sure, everyone is building for the future, expecting things to change and for the next generation of users.